Hello everybody and welcome to Kentucky. We have so much to look forward to this weekend. It would be remiss of me not to start with the Breeders' Cup Classic here on GG because it features the best horse in the world. Flightline comes into this five from five. Widely expected to make it six from six, but he does have a very good field to beat in. The big one, life is good, multiple group one winner. Almost forgotten about here. If the track is fast and at the moment it seems to be riding pretty fair, then that could play to life is good's advantage. I think he has been a bit dismissed, but I'm not brave enough to go against the favorite here. He was devastating in that Pacific Classic. For me, he deserves all the comparisons to the great secretariat. I'm not taking on flight line in the big one. On to the turf, which at the moment has a Godolphin as first and second favourites uh, with a couple of really interesting ones, Nations Prizes and plenty of winning over here in the States and also Rebels Romance, who's had an intriguing career having won the UAE Derby on dirt, been favourite for the Dubai World Cup at one point and now has sort of been reinvented as a turf horse winning a couple of grade ones over in Germany. I don't think that form is good enough and I'm intrigued that the Bill Mart trained filly, Warlike Goddess, is as big a price as she is, so I'm taking her beat the boys in that one as she did last time out. She's a really good filly. She thrives over a mile and a half, all like goddess for me in the turf. Move on to the distaff and we've got this fascinating clash here of the stable mates, Nest and Malathat. Nest, of course, gets weight. She's been the preeminent three-year-old filly this year. She's a superstar, but Malathat has kept better company, hasn't she? She's beaten some really smart horses, including Claria, who reopposes also Latresca this year. She was beaten in this race last year. This will probably be her last start. I saw her this morning. I thought she looked absolutely great. I'm going with Malathat to right the wrong of last year and lift the Breeders' Cup this staff onto the mile and I do think this one will go to Godolphin. I'm a bit concerned that Modern Games ran at Ascot on rain softened ground that might have taken a bit out of him but it still was a really battling a really battling defeat I thought on that occasion behind Bayside Boy. His, his win in Canada prior to that was absolutely brilliant. I don't see anything good enough in this field to beat Modern Games in that one. I know we've got a really strong hand with the Europeans. Ed Walker thinks his dream loafer should be favourite and she certainly does have some very smart form from France and of course in there as well is Kinross although Rafe Beckett admits that this is a tougher race than the one which he won last time out at Ascot so modern games for me to continue Charlie Appleby's excellent record here at the Breeders' Cup. Moving on to the sprint and wouldn't it be wonderful if Jackie's Warrior could finish his career with a victory in this race which has eluded him last year but I'm not sure that he can. I'm just going to go against him because last time out he was beaten. I don't know that there were any particular excuses for that. So he was a little bit disappointing as he was last year when he did have an excuse, but only six behind the rear posing a low heart west. The one who gets me excited here is Elite Power, who comes here on a real winning streak. Could just be anything at this stage in his career. He is so exciting, Elite Power, for me to beat Jackie's Warrior in the sprint. The filly and mare turf should be one for the UK. Nashua should have won the Prix de l'Opera last time. She was mugged. I expect her to right that wrong. She's pretty short at around about six to four. And if you want a bigger prize, look no further than the Chad Brown trained in Italian. We won a pretty competitive edition of the First Lady here over this course last time out. She could be interesting. But Nashua, I think, is a worthy favourite in the filly and mare turf. Onto the dirt mile, a race that a lot of people love to hate. It looks pretty open, I think. Cody's wish is interesting. So is Cyberknife. They've ducked the classic with him. He's a multiple grade one winner, of course. They're coming back in trip. But I like Laurel River. Really interesting horse. Again, could, comes into that kind of could be anything bracket at the moment. Won the grade two Pat O'Brien at Del Mar by a wide margin last time. He looks exciting. So Laurel River for me in the dirt mile. Moving on to the turf sprint and Golden Power was well beaten at Royal Ascot, but that is a straight track. He's much, much better round a bend. He also loves Keeneland. He won the, the juvenile turf sprint here two years ago. He was emphatic last time out, I thought, in his prep for this. I saw him in the morning. He looks absolutely fantastic. And I think we'll forgive him that Royal Ascot defeat. And uh, he's going to perhaps enter that, that really sort of rare club of three. Breeders' Cup wins. Highfield Princess is in there as well. What she's done has not in any way received uh, enough recognition. Winning three grade ones in five weeks on, on three in three different countries is remarkable. I think that particular fairy tale will stop here though. Golden Power for me in the turf sprint. On to the Philly and Mare sprint, a race that can provide the odd upset. CC is back to try and win it again, but Goodnight Olive was so impressive last time in the Grade 1 Ballerina. She's the one for me in that one, although an honourable mention for Echo Zulu is a very smart filly as well. And that closes out our Breeders' Cup tips. It's a beautiful day here at Keeneland. Good luck on Saturday.